in the previous section, we took a look at being able to work with sequences and being able to identify the explicit form just given the sequence of numbers. Now we're going to take that one step further and start taking a look at series. A series is essentially going to be the sum of the terms in a sequence. If we have a series of this form where i equals a to b, the variable a is the lower bound, b is the upper bound, and then we have the sequence c sub i, that just means to add up all of the numbers starting with a, ending with b, and if we evaluate the sequence at, that, at those values, all numbers in between or all integers in between to be able to add those up. And so we're just going to go through and put these in ascending order and substitute and evaluate. Okay, so for instance, a pretty easy one is this first one where we have the sum of squares between two and six. Okay, so A in this case is two, B is six, upper and lower bound. And so this is going to be equal to two square plus three square plus four square plus five square plus six square. All right, so I is the index we're substituting for I. And this is going to give us 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus 36. And this is going to give us 20. This is going to give us 45. 45 and 25 is going to give us 70. Um, and then 70 and 20 should give us 90. So for letter A, the sum should end up being 90. All right, I'm going to double check my arithmetic because I'm doing it by hand. So we have 20. And then these two are 45, so that's going to be 65, 65, and 25 is 90. Good. Okay. Now, something that might not be as easy right, is if we have something that appears to be impossible to evaluate, or not impossible, but extremely lengthy. So we have this animal where we have i equals 1 to 10,000, um, and it's 1 over i plus 1 minus 1 over i. Now, what we can do is we can start writing out the terms of the series, and then maybe something good will happen like this. Okay, so let's start with i equals 1, and that's going to be 1 over 2 minus 1 over 1. And we're going to add to that. If we plug in 2, that's going to be 1 over 3 minus 1 over 2. And then if we add to that i equals 3, which is going to be 1 over 4, minus one over three. So we're just substituting i back into the terms of the sequence and just adding them together. One fifth minus one over four. And we could just keep doing that. So that's just gonna keep going forever. Um, and then let's just have i equals nine, 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 which would be one over nine, 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 nine or one over 10,000 minus one over nine, 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 nine. And then plus I equals 10,000. That's gonna be one over 1001 minus one over 10,000. All right. Now, the trick here is to recognize that some of the terms, in fact, almost all the terms are gonna cancel out because notice in the first sequence or in the first um, expression, we have a half, and then we have a negative one half. So those are going to cancel out. We have a one third and negative one third. We have a negative one fourth and a positive one fourth. And then you could probably see that there would be a negative one fifth in the next one. And that pattern is going to continue. Now notice at towards the end here, we would have a negative one over 1,000 or 10,000 and a one over 10,000. And then this one over nine, 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 nine would, uh, would cancel out with the positive one over nine, 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 nine from the previous term. So really, what does that leave us with? That leaves us with negative one, which is the negative one over one, plus one over 10,001, right? And then if we just got a common denominator and added those, that would be negative 10,000 over 10,001. All right. Um, that type of series in which, and this is part B, by the way, that type of series in which the terms cancel each other out is called either a collapsing series 
Um, and sometimes it's called a telescoping series. Right? So just keep those two in mind um, as these are types of series you may have seen in calculus too when you dealt with series or another course. But, um, but these types of series do come up um, quite often in natural mathematics as a, as a matter of fact. Sometimes we want to shift the variable or we want to do a change of variable. And sometimes it's helpful to be able to write a, se a sequence that comprises a series into a more simplistic form. And so we use a change of variable. And so in these exercises, the change of variable is provided. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the original series into a form, in this case, of j. So we know right away that j equals i plus 3. That also means that j minus 3 is equal to i, right? which could be helpful for the substitution portion of this. Right? So all I did was just subtract 3 from both sides. Now, since i equals 4 and i equals 35 for the upper and the lower bounds, but we know that j is equal to i plus 3. So that means that j is equal to 4 plus 3, which is 7 for the lower bound. And j is going to be equal to 35 plus 3 for the upper bound. Right? And so our new series is going to be j equals 7 to 38. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute j minus 3 back in for i. So we're going to get j minus 3 plus 3, and then j minus 3 squared. Or we could write this as j equals 7 to 38, j over j minus 3 squared. Now, I don't know if this is any more simplistic than the first, but it's different. Um, it clears up the numerator a little bit. It makes the denominator a little bit more complex, and it gives us higher numbers to deal with. Um, but these two series, the initial series and the change series, they're the exact same thing. They will equal the same value. Just as a secondary example of this, we have i equals negative 9 to n minus 10. i is equal, or i minus 10 squared, i minus 9 cubed, and j is equal to i minus 10. So just like we did before, this means that j plus 10 is going to be equal to i. And so we're going to substitute back in. All right, so i equals negative 9. And we know that j is i minus 10. So negative 9 minus 10 is going to be negative 19. And then if i equals n minus 10, then n minus 10 minus 10 is going to be n minus 20, right? And again, these are in terms of j now. So our new series, j, is going to be minus 19 to n minus 20. And now we're going to substitute j plus 10 back in for each of the odds. So that means we're going to get j plus 10 minus 10 squared j plus 10 minus 9 cubed. And of course, we can simplify this. And we're going to simplify this into j equals minus 19 to n minus 20, j squared, j plus 1 cubed. So that's what our change of variable is. Okay, All we're doing is we're just going through and just shifting the index. Okay, It's actually very similar to um, up top when we just did the explicit sorts of series that we were just shifting the index, all right? So over here, if we look all the way back up here, we just shifted the index by one and same thing right here. So just a change of variable when we did that, right? Um, so in the last section, what we're going to look at is we're going to start taking a look at one last sort of precursor to our mathematical induction. Um, and that's going to be factorials and how we work with those.